Hello everyone, it's Stefan from Corehawk 3D. Uh, I've got another mod finally for the T16000M throttle by Thrustmaster. If you'll notice, my throttle is over here on the right side and is a left hand only throttle really. I have seen some people use it with their right hand. It doesn't feel the most comfortable and my pinky is definitely not dexterous enough to use all these switches correctly. What I've done is I've taken this thing apart. I've taken out all the internal components, reoriented them to a more ergonomic position for the right hand and that's what this is. This is the upper half or shell and the lower mount of what I am calling the sinister swap mod. These two go together like this. There's also a rework of the middle finger or ring finger switch that will go in this slot here and it also comes with a jumper cable for the internal harness which will need to be lengthened because of the reposition of the PC boards on the inside. This was designed to really give left-handed users an option because I up to this far, I have not been able to find an actual HOTAS, like hand on stick and throttle, that was designed to accommodate a left hand dominant user. Not to say that left hand dominant users can't adapt perfectly fine. Uh, what I would bring to this is a big and a small screwdriver and a Sharpie. Um, the small screwdriver will be to get into some of the narrower parts and smaller screws that will be coming out of this handle. Sharpie is going to be to mark the wire harness when we pull it out of the handle over here. And then I'd recommend some kind of a dish or maybe magnetic dish to retain all the small parts that are, again, going to be coming out of this. Let's keep these away from our pets and, and, and little people, please. Um, keep our, our uh, loved ones safe from ingesting these things. That can be dangerous. Uh, and then I guess if we're using a magnetic dish, don't go and put it on your monitor or a hard drive or something. Also worth mentioning, uh, the installation of this mod will not carry over the functionality of these rudder paddles that come stock on the left hand only stock version of this throttle. I wasn't able to find a good ergonomic way to make that work with this because um, either you need monstrous hands to be able to move the throttle, reaching over buttons and controls to make paddles work, um, which my hands are already pretty big and I couldn't do it comfortably. So uh, that feature has been omitted. Um, while I'm on the topic rudders, um, this stick is notorious for having Z-axis issues, and ironically, this last week, I've had this stick for probably over two years, this last week it stopped working. And I went, I knew exactly where to go, I went to RBJ's channel, I followed his steps and it worked like a charm. It's back up and running, so maybe that's you, maybe you're having issues there. There are options out there to get that, some kind of a Z-axis, especially in the absence of this one here. All right, so without further ado, we'll go ahead and start disassembling. Step one, of course, unplug it. Don't wanna be short-circuiting anything with this thing plugged in as we dive into it. I'm gonna move some of this to the side so I can have a little bit more space. And if you see me edit out some portions of this video, like for example, there's eight screws on the bottom of this and I'm going to unscrew all of them. I'm probably not going to have you guys just watch me take all of them out just to try to keep this video a little bit brief. So obviously feel free to pause um, just to keep up if you're doing this, if you're following along as I do this. So we've loosened all eight screws here. This thing should come out pretty easily. Let's retain that here. Uh, I'd like to tip it down so it retains these two side rods because those things like to go um, zooming off pretty easily when I take this out. Yeah, just like that. Um, they are retained towards the front, that's why I tilt it downward. All right, we'll set this off to the side. Won't need that for a while. Um, and then we'll go ahead and take this apart. Quick note for the impulse slider users, our magnet for the magnetic detent is here in the slider and it's mounted here in the case. If you store the throttle at the 50% position, it's gonna be constantly tugging on this magnet here. So I'd recommend storing full forward or full aft and you won't have the issues that I've heard occasionally with this magnet coming unstuck from the case. Um, also, uh, yeah, that's the impulse slider. It fixes the stiction problem inside the throttle. Uh, it's pretty, also a pretty well-known issue for this throttle. Um, so go check that out. This is where things can get a little bit more delicate on the inside. So this part in particular, the sensor swing arm, you gotta hold that thing steady so it doesn't pop off. It can pop off very easily right here at the pivot point it's not gonna break if you do that, but it's not good to keep doing it because obviously small plastic parts bending lots of times is not great. So we'll keep uh, taking off the handle here. 
I'm taking off the three screws out of the bottom of the handle and that will disconnect it from the slider and then we'll be done with the lower platform part for a little bit. All right, there we go. All right. We'll set this platform part to the side. We'll see that here in a little bit. We're left with just the handle here. Um, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws on the bottom. These two that are deeply recessed in these holes are what I'm using this screwdriver for. Before we take this off, this is where we're gonna use our Sharpie. So you see the, the harness here is at a certain position out here. What I've done is I've marked the location approximate with kind of like this outer edge of the handle. So it's a reference point. So when we have a little bit of extra slack in the sinister swap, when we're all mounted up in there, we know how much length of this to have come out of the the hole here in the base. This lower portion uh, pops off like that. You'll feel a little bit of a tug. Oh, it looks, feels like our screw here isn't quite loose all the way. There we go. All right, so this lower portion pops off and then this foam piece in here is gonna retain the harness. It keeps it from rattling around. Um, now that we freed that, it comes off quite easily and we can feed the harness through that hole in the same way that we feed it through the bottom of the slider. We'll save the foam thing. We'll be using that in the sinister swap when we get to that. All right, we got two more screws on this that we gotta take out and they're these uh, little guys right on the front here. And then this thing's gonna come apart like a little eggshell. One, two, all right. We can kind of start with the, the back half of it here, start pulling it up. Um, looks like the front portion kind of loosened first, then the thumb plate will come out as well. All that's left to do is disconnect harnesses. Uh, this is definitely a time where you want to be gentle and slow, so you don't pull the actual wires out of their connector pieces. What we want to do is pull the, the connector pieces out of their sockets. Uh, again, not breaking any wires. As far as breaking wires go, I forgot to mention with the, the lower platform here. I've put some hot glue right here as well as right here. Um, you can do that if you want, especially if you take it apart a bunch of times like I do. It prevents this thing from flopping around and then bending a bunch of times right at that junction right there, which will prevent it from bending off at the solder point. I've also done a similar thing here. Again, should not be an issue for you guys. Uh, you're probably not taking your throttles apart quite as often as I am. You may also have a screw right here in this gear connecting to this knob. Uh, I can't remember if I did or did not. I know I have extras. I could put one in there if I want to. If you do not, it's not an issue. You're, you, you're going to be able to feel how much force this thing comes off with. And if, yeah, there's like a nice little crisp pop right there when that came out. If yours by chance comes off way too easily, know that a screw can go in that hole um, and you can make that happen quite easily if yours did not come with a screw in there, which again, I'm not sure. It's been a long time since the first time I took this thing apart. All right, two screws out of the rotation sensor. This thing comes free. We'll retain all of our screws over there. I'll put the sensor here and then pull a gear out of that, retain it in our dish, and we're done with the upper half. Moving on to the thumb plate, as I call it, we have our smaller PC board here. I'm gonna leave this harness attached because there's, I don't think there's a great reason to remove that. You don't really need to. We'll start by taking off these little screws that go into the back sides of these joysticks. These screws, uh, you definitely wanna be cognizant of where they go when you come out. Just, you just don't wanna lose them. Uh, they don't go to any specific joystick. See, I almost lost one right there. Um, just know that you gotta have the same number um, to put back on as you're taking off. Sorry, hold that better so you can see that. Props to Thrustmaster for making this thing so easy to disassemble with a Phillips head screwdriver. I really have enjoyed working on this thing. We're gonna take three screws off of this PC board here and then that will expose the button and the associated button plunger, as I like to call them. They're, I think they're silicone. They're flexible little rubber pieces with a contact on it. And without it, the buttons are not usable. So you gotta be careful not to lose that. 
All right, small PC board is free to come straight off. And then here's what I was talking about. We got the button and the button plunger. Button plunger comes, comes off the button very easily. It has a little uh, dimple that goes straight into that hole right there. And it fits securely so long as the PC board is holding it against the button. So we're done with our thumb plate. And we'll start removing the small joystick from the big PC board. All right, that's out. We'll keep the screw. And then we can get set this to the side. The rudder control swing arm right here, um, it can make it a little bit tricky when you're trying to take this off because there's um, a spring in there that is retained with like a, a little plastic piece kind of on the, the front of this, on the underside. It is possible to take this PC board off without removing this swing arm. You do have the option right now of pulling this off. It's not the easiest thing to do. It, it, it takes a little bit of force. So you kind of got to be gentle um, while firm. If you don't want to do that, no biggie. Um, I would recommend taking it off at least after you get this thing out of there. Having this not in there will simplify the mounting of this in the sinister swap. We'll set this to the side. We're not going to need that. All right, we got four screws we got to take off of our big PCB here. And then we're going to expose two buttons and two associated button plungers. All right, last screw came off. Um, big PC board comes straight off. There it is. And there's the two buttons I talked about with their associated plungers. We'll carefully remove these, retaining the plungers and the buttons. First and trickiest part of mounting this, the parts inside this is going to be mounting this rotational sensor. Um, before I get too far ahead of myself though, we'll take our big screwdriver and one of our screws and pre-thread one of these holes. That's very quite difficult to get to. It's this one right here. So if you can kind of see here, it's a it's already at an awkward angle. And then when the PC board's in there, it it's right next to one of the plugs for the harnesses on the big PC board. So you want to do all, all your kind of heavy lifting right now to pre-thread this hole. Um, that's in there nice and tight, and I'm just going to back it all the way out. Um, if you don't have a screwdriver that can get in there, that hole I would classify as being optional because we already have three other ones that will interface with three holes on that PC board and hold it in there plenty strong. Um, it's if There was a fourth hole available, so I decided to use it. Uh, it's really no harm, no foul if you decide not to. All right. Hardest slash most complicated part of this whole operation is right now, so let's take our time. You'll see here on the rotation sensor gear, there's two little circles left over from the injection molding process. There's one here and there's one here. I'll show you the whole traverse of the gear here, just so you can, I can talk you on to where the midpoint is. So all the way that way, which is at like a diagonal position, and then all the way the other way, which is another diagonal position, meaning that is the center. And then, I may or may not be able to show you this on camera, but our, our main point of reference is going to be this upper horizontal surface. We need to make sure these two circles are vertical, and then we need to identify a singular tooth that is at the very top and make it point directly up, perpendicular to this horizontal surface. So that's set. So this sensor is going to go with the, the two lines and that little semicircular outline facing up or away from the, the stanchion here. Kind of see how that's sitting in there right now. Um, we have armed our screwdriver here with a screw. Magnetic tip is very helpful here in this case. I'm going to come through this hole right here and aim for that um, hole right there with the screw. That one's going to be the easiest and most direct one that I can thread on. There we go. All right, nice and tight, but not too tight. Um, we'll go ahead and put the second screw on there. 
you'll notice quickly that this one is at a, a very awkward angle. So I've made the stanchion, like the screw hole in the stanchion wider. So it's a lot easier to thread and you're not gonna sit here stripping out the head of your screw. So we've put our, our sensor in there with the correct tooth pointing directly up. We're gonna take our small screwdriver and our gear. You'll notice on this gear, there's a little line right there, a little arrow almost. Well, it's a little line with two dots on either side of it. The line is centered on a gap between two teeth. That gap is where we're gonna put that tooth that we pointed directly up. So what I like to do is I like to snug this onto the Phillips head of my screwdriver. So it stays like this and so I have something that I can almost use like a needle to, to um, put it through that hole there while still being able to see the line to best align it with that tooth. Take your time. Hopefully you only have to do this once. All right, it's in there. I'm going to kind of wiggle this thing out of the hole so I don't pull this the gear back out when I do that because it's being held in there by gravity now. I'm holding it with my finger now. I'll take the knob. You'll notice there's a flat spot um, on the center piece of this. This thing won't go together unless you line those up, so it's pretty foolproof. It goes on pretty easily, and then you can snug it on nice and hard, and then you should feel um, free movement on that. Hardest part's over. Um, we'll go ahead and start putting our small PC board on. We're going to start by taking our flat button and the plunger. There we go. It's in its hole right there. This one, it'll take a little finagling to get um, aligned with where it's supposed to be, mainly because this stanchion right here, know that you do not need to snug or bend anything. You just need to wiggle it until it gets in there. It's there, it will fit. It's not gonna take any force at all. We'll take our three screws now. Uh, it'll be obvious which ones, which uh, holes in the PC board you need to go through. I like to start here with the one by the, the button, just to make sure that we're not going to lose the, the mount of the, the plunger to the button because until this PC board is snugged down, if it gets jostled too hard, it can move around. Now I'm not going to totally snug this thing down yet. You can see it can still move around a little bit, and that's to make sure that we get perfect alignment with the rest of the screws. Uh, it might look at points that the uh, the stanchions underneath the, the holes are not perfectly aligned. It's meant to keep contact with the PC board um, when all screws are installed. And that's to allow for proper positioning of the joysticks on the other side. All right, that one's in. Not going to tighten it down all the way yet. Third screw going in. All right, snugging down the three screws. All right, they're all in. Uh, small PC boards mounted successfully. Our button works. We'll go ahead and install the thumb joysticks now. Uh, quick note about these, these are interchangeable completely, so you can put them wherever you feel you want to. I like to put this one closest to the edge here because it has a trough on it that feels a little bit more natural. Um, I know we all have different hands of different shapes and sizes, so you can put these wherever you prefer. When you're mounting these uh, joysticks, um, make sure it's, it's not rattling around in here. Um, you may have to look to the underside to make sure you actually see the square fit in the smaller square shape on the other side. And then when you're tightening down the screw, test the movement of these, make sure you get crisp clicks in all direction. And if you don't, try loosening it, backing it off just a little bit to make sure you actually get the full tactile feel on all these. All right, small PC board is mounted. Time to put the big PC board in. We're gonna start with the buttons and associated plungers. Um, these buttons are hole specific, so it's, it's impossible to get these wrong. This one, again, uh, no force, no bending necessary. They're 
might be a, an opportunity or reason to, to move this to help it get in there, but we're not bending anything or hurting anything to get this installed. All right, I'm gonna hold that down. Actually, I can just let gravity hold that down. Start with the one right by the buttons. We got uh, three more screws to put in this one. Um, you'll see what I was talking about earlier when we were talking about um, pre-threading this one. It's right next to that junction right there. If you don't have a screwdriver that's gonna safely put a screw in there, don't, because it's it, it'll be too easy to mess this little junction up um, with this a, a, a screwdriver bit that's too big and you don't want to do that. The three remaining screws and mounts will do will hold fine. It's just a little bit of extra. All right, tightening down our, our last screws here on the big PC board. Feeling good. Uh, as I predicted, I was not able to get this one completely tight. I'm not gonna mess with it or worry about it. This thing's working fine. I can push down on this. That's probably the hardest you'll be pushing down on this PC board. And I do not see any movement. Uh, I feel good about how this thing's doing. Next, we're gonna plug in some of our cables here. So rotational sensor is gonna go over here, right here. Just make sure you get the correct orientation on those. Small PC board plugs into big PC board right next to the small PC board. You can't mess this one up. You can tell quite easily by the size of the connector. All right, those are plugged in now. Now we're gonna take our custom middle slash ring finger switch. We're gonna put it in here. It's gonna be obvious if it's improperly aligned because it'll look something like that. Just spin it around until the orientation makes sense. Same deal down here. It might be a little bit more difficult to get it to, to poke through that hole in the bottom. All right, we got it poking through the bottom here. I'm gonna apply pressure up here to make sure I don't push it out with the screw or screwdriver. There we go. This one's a little bit more tricky to get threaded. It is a 3D printed part, got it. Um, it should hold just fine. Same rule, if it feels pretty sticky, you can back this screw off a little bit and it should feel like it's moving a little bit more free there. All right, uh, yeah, now we gotta put our main harness on with the jumper cable. So the side with the black tape here is the side that goes towards the handle like this. Our jumper cable, um, all that we need to do is look at the, the plug right here, make sure that we have this thing oriented the way it goes into here, and make sure you have no twist in this, and take the end that would be going into that board, keep it the same orientation as this, as this side right here. See, they're, they're the same like that. And then we're just gonna take it and plug it straight into the end of this. It is possible to reverse. Let's not reverse it, okay? Here's the plug that's gonna go into the board. You hear, you see notches there, no twist. Original cable, notches. We gotta plug this into the PC board now. Um, there is not a way to plug that in backwards. All right, that's plugged in there. Um, we got our, our wire harness with jumper cable. It's a little bit extended in length to allow for the repositioning of the big PC board. The lower half here, um, the graphic on the inside, I'm just a big P40 Warhawk fan. Um, it's in the name of my shop, Corehawk 3D, um, Core XY 3D, like 3D printers combined with Warhawk. That's how it came up with the name. Um, but yeah, I just thought it looked really cool. It's really sweet with like the transparent effect here. And as far as the design considerations that went into how I oriented the boards, this is, I think, uh, it's like Mark 7, effectively, uh, in meaning there's been seven other variants that I did before this one. So I tried doing variants with the big PC board with the, the, the 
the analog joystick, it was like it was down here on the side, like so your thumb would be doing that joystick right here, and it was cool and it felt great, but it gave me some redundancy in the axis. So if you think about it, if you're pushing the joystick forward and you're sliding the throttle forward, you got two axes pointing the exact same direction, and you don't necessarily need that. Maybe I don't know. I didn't think it was a great idea, so I changed it. Uh, I also tried an orientation where the big PC board was in the top like it is right now, but it had the, the big analog joystick for your pinky. And I don't know if you ever tried using your pinky to play like one of the sticks on your game controllers or anything. It is near impossible. So that is how I arrived at the orientation that you see on this thing. We're keeping the pointer here on this joystick because you actually have the dexterity to do that. We have obviously the three joysticks here because your thumb can do all kinds of things um, with these, makes great use of those. Um, and we still kind of keep some of the up down. So yes, I realize that there is kind of a forward backwards component with this, but it is tilted forwards so that you kind of have that up down left right. Um, and that's what I use for my uh, thrust vectoring in Star Citizen. Anyways, I saved some of the black screws here you can obviously use whichever ones you want um, i like to put the black screws here on the outside that were going into the base it does not matter um, which ones you choose they're the same so we're gonna start in no particular order putting the the screws to hold the underside plate on of our sinister swap here i'm not going to tighten them all down until i've got them all in um, it's a pretty exact fit, so you want to make sure it's aligned first, and then tighten them down. If you so choose, and I know it's kind of late in the video to be saying this, but there's nothing stopping you from using a screw to pre-thread all of the holes on this, this part before you install anything it might make your life a bit easier um, when you're doing stuff where you're holding multiple components in place trying to get everything to line up keep in mind that we're not using the two small black screws uh, they're noticeably smaller than the other ones that came off of the front side of the other the stock throttle um, i just didn't find a need or a spot to put those that's in and and that's it. I'm going to tighten these down now because we should have the final position pretty well set for this piece. Another quick note as far as the texture feel on this thing. Yes, it is FDM printed. Um, and yes, people told me it was too smooth. So I had uh, multiple people try to, to hold it and tell me what they thought. The layers are in this direction. Um, it's designed to print well with very little support for both pieces uh, to minimize material waste as well as clutter on the inside. Uh, but I added the, the texture here on the, the, the back here to add some grip in this direction and it feels great. I love it. Um, yeah, just a quick note about that. We'll bring back our base here to reinstall the handle on it. This is where the work we did to get the correct position for our harness is gonna um, save us some trouble. All right, same as before, let's make sure we're not tightening any one of these down before all three screws have found their correct um, hole and position in the handle. You'll be able to feel that handle kind of aligning as you tighten them down a little bit. That's why you wouldn't want to tighten one of them down before the others had, had found their correct spot. All right, that's on. We'll secure this, and then hopefully that'll be at the end of all of our loose, kind of delicate parts that we could potentially break. You'll see, like, this cable is pulling like this right now. Um, that's why I've hot glued it here and here. If you do choose to hot glue that though, um, do make sure it's not gonna 
dry in a like a, a shape that will interfere with the underside plate when we mount that. All right, so here it is. Uh, we're gonna find that same notch um, over here on the tape, mount it with this little plastic piece here. We'll thread it through its respective grooves here and gently push this back onto its plug. Do take some time to make sure you don't have any wires that are gonna get pinched. Um, particular here, here, uh, on this circle piece here and here. We'll just hold this in place and see how we do as we move this back and forth. Looks pretty good to me. Uh, I don't think we're gonna have any issues. You can hold this to the side here. You can see the marks we made. That's That looks good. Here's the bottom plate. We'll make sure this thing clicks into place comfortably. There should be no bulges that we have to tighten a screw against. Otherwise you might have like some rocking in your base as it sits on your desk. All right, and we are all assembled. Sinister swap complete. Uh, one last part we gotta do is to test all of our buttons, switches, and mechanical stops for the joystick, as well as more, most importantly, this one, because that's the easiest one to mess up. So I'll go ahead and pull that up now. All right, I pulled up the properties box from the game controller settings in the control panel on Windows. And as you can see, we got it right. Uh, when we move this, it's at its mechanical stop right here. And it'll go all the way to this mechanical stop and it's a full range of travel. Um, obviously full range of travel for that. We got a full range of travel for the joystick. And this works, buttons work, button works, this works. This works, and this works. All right, quick little demo here. Um, upper left, I'm using the sinister swap with my left hand on the stick. Uh, lower right, I am using my right hand on the stick, left hand on the stock throttle. Uh, I don't know if this is an actual valid comparison of left, or I guess dominant versus non-dominant side flying. Probably more shows what I'm used to and what I'm not. I just thought it'd be fun um, while I talk about the background for the name uh, that I gave the throttle. So in the aviation community, you get call signs and they're not usually flattering. Um, they have to be more or less politically correct, but they're usually humorous and like I said, not the most flattering. Anyways, um, sinister is one that you could potentially get if you are left-handed because the Latin word for left is also the same as sinister. I think like back in the dark ages that stemmed from the belief or superstition that left-handed people were, I don't know, evil or something because people were scared of what they didn't understand. Anyways, I just thought it'd be a kind of aviation um, centered slash related name for it. I think it sticks nice. Um, but anyways, yeah. <laughs> I am clearly much more skilled with flying with my right hand. I haven't even landed over here on the left side. <laughs> okay, there, yeah, I guess that's landing. Anyways, um, thanks for your time. If you got this far, I really appreciate it. Thanks again also for all the support that you've given you as the community for, um, through the, the beginning and continued success of the impulse slider. Um, that's been a blast. It has been an absolute blast to, to kind of join this community and bring something to the table like that. Um, anyways, yeah. We'll see if I can uh, make it back to the carrier here. Uh, probably not. We'll see. Yeah, I'm going to say no. Anyways, yeah. Happy gaming. <laughs>